The dock worker strike will impact construction and real estate. Right now, the International Longs Men's Association and the U.S. Marine Alliance, which represent dozens of East and Gulf Coast ports, could not agree on terms on the labor contract, setting approximately 45,000 dock workers on strike, shutting down 36 ports from Maine to Texas. The dock worker strike will impact construction and real estate. For those of you guys who don't know what it is, let me explain to you guys really quick exactly what's going on. Right now, the International Longs Men's Association and the U.S. Marine Alliance, which represent dozens of East and Gulf Coast ports, could not agree on terms on the labor contract, setting approximately 45,000 dock workers on strike, shutting down 36 ports from Maine to Texas. Now, these are East Coast and West Coast ports. Now, not all ports will close. And I'll tell you guys that the largest port in Long Beach is on the West Coast. And so there's five major ports on the West Coast where distribution and commodities can still come in and imports can still come in. Now, with that said, the vast majority of the East Coast ports and the Southern Gulf Coast ports will get affected. Now, Gulf Coast port ports are typically pretty small. A lot of those ports have to come in through the, the Panama Canal or they're coming down south and they're not equipped for the large boats. But in spite of that, even if only the West Coast ports go open, the number two port in the United States is the New York, New Jersey port. And so that will have lasting effects on import coming into the United States. Now, for construction, we just got to a place right now where we finally had the feds come back and the feds said, we're going to lower interest rates. We did one interest rate reduction this past month. Now, we're projected that right now, by November, we should have one more rate reduction coming in. Now, as soon as we feel in real estate and in construction that things are going to open up, we have another variable that yet compromises where we're going to be moving and migrating towards. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to pay attention to. There's always going to be unforeseen circumstances. And one of the things that we were sitting back saying is, hey, we're finally at the bottom barrel of the market right now, and we can start foreseeing that the market is going to start improving. I stood in front of a room this past weekend, and one of the things that I went over in front of a room of over 100 of our build wealth communities, I said, don't be so ambitious that you start underwriting things at lower interest rates quite yet because there's other variables outside of our control. And one of them is the cost for goods and commodities. We saw this during the uh, pandemic. The pandemic was completely out of our control. What happened in the pandemic and what's happening now with the dock workers strike is going to affect what's coming in to the United States with commodities, lumber, doors, windows, hardware, door handles, fixtures, you name it, all across the line. I sit in front of an old vintage apartment complex today, and on these value-add complexes, if you're going in, you're doing heavy lifting, this complex probably has over 450 units in it, and when you're doing heavy lifting on even a value-add acquisition like this, it's going to have lasting effects on it. When you're doing a ground-up construction, on a 100 unit, 30 unit, 200 unit, 500 unit apartment complex, it's gonna have lasting effects. Because what happens guys is that we go in, we source, like mechanical equipment has been a big issue. Electrical boxes and gear for electric has been a big issue. A lot of this stuff manufactured overseas, predominantly in China and Thailand, we're not getting the distribution that we had. So what ends up happening is that, one, the crates stop getting shipped completely, okay? And then for those that are actually in the water, as long as this strike's going on, those boats just float. And so there's inventory that'll just sit and float out at sea until those ports open up, um, costing many man hours and a lot of time. Now, an increase in commodities is projected to come out of this. Now, what that increase will be, we don't know. So the feds use interest rates to come in and say, hey, we're going to artificially control inflation. Well, my question to every investor out there is can the feds settle this strike? Because inflation is going to happen on commodities right now in spite of interest rates. And one thing that I have preached about and I'm explaining right now for the benefit of you investors out there is that any time that interest rates go up, it throttles the market. Yes, it'll put us in a position where inflation kind of comes back down based on supply and demand because it just puts a restraint on supply and people can't afford it. So even if there is a demand, it just throttles it. And so it artificially reduces inflation. It's external circumstances like the port strike that directly affect inflation. And there is no and ifs or buts about it. When you have a boat floating at sea, burning an exponential amount of fuel, and you have labor on that boat, and 
there's nothing to support the financial well-being of that labor because distribution doesn't happen. Middleman markup goes up exponentially. And so what lands up happening is that goes to the end consumer being you and I. And it doesn't matter if it's going to be on a grocery shelf store for rice, for beans, for bread, for beverages. It doesn't matter if it goes down to the supply houses at Home Depot, Lowe's, your Ace Hardware's, and all of your other local suppliers. Boise and all the wood suppliers across the United States. Now look, when these goods cannot come in, there's nothing that can be sold. Do you guys remember when there was a shortage of toilet paper? Do you remember when there's a shortage of eggs? Look, it's going to be all commodities that are coming in overseas. And we have the vast majority of our goods and services that are throttled because these ports are closed down. There is nothing that funds the labor during this time. And so what ends up happening is there's an increased cost for goods and services. Now, when this happens, most contractors will start seeking alternatives. And the biggest alternatives is purchasing domestically right here in the United States. And it's one of the things that we've been advocating for. When you say U.S. built, American made right here in America, those are products that we should start advocating for in times like this and all the time. You know, when we talk about the Computer Chip Act that is putting in billions of dollars, there's over $2 trillion that's putting in to chip manufacturing in the United States. It's part of an, an ongoing effort from the pandemic because it's what throttled the automotive industry. So companies like Intel right now are going in, they're dumping billions of dollars into their facilities throughout different locations nationwide because this will allow them for bandwidth under circumstances exactly like the one that we're looking at right now with a port strike. And so if you're in real estate and if you're in construction, you should be concerned about how this is going to affect the initial economic circumstances of commodities right now today, because it's going to have a long-term effect of the actual stabilized value of the actual assets long-term. And so it's really important that when you're looking at stuff, even interest rates, one of the things that we're looking at, because we have five projects coming out of the ground and in all five projects, we have a 32 unit, we have a 208 unit, we have a 150 unit, a 178 unit, and we just took down an acquisition in Scottsdale with another 84 units. And that's a luxury property. One of the big things, guys, is when I look at that stuff, I sit and look at my budget. And I say, do we hold or do we migrate forward? And the answer is we migrate forward. But our meeting this morning with our general contractor, our project managers, and with our bank is how will we perform as builders, as developers, and as real estate professionals if and when this port strike actually happens. And so one of the things that we're doing right now is we're already looking at sourcing some of the hard-to-get items like our gearboxes, like our underground vaults, like our breakers for electrical, like our mechanical items, like air conditioners, that a lot of that stuff is coming from China and other small hardwares like door handles. Where do we source this stuff? We are already currently looking for suppliers to be able to take advantage of having bandwidth for purchase and also being able to go in and talk to our lenders, asking them, hey, Will you fund 50% of the materials to be able to stockpile these materials so we have them available at our exposure? So if you're doing fix and flips, if you're going in and you're doing new construction, or if you're just going in and doing value add on multifamily or other assets, it's probably a good time to start buying in bulk and taking advantage of what could be not knowing what tomorrow has in store. And with that said, even if, if the strike doesn't happen, you're just more readily prepared for your acquisitions, your takedown, and you're ultimately ready to stabilize your asset for a safer purchase, a safer investment, and long-term stability. Investors, don't throttle projects. There's always a means, there's always a way. It's those that get creative and those that are workers that go out and seek the means to the solution that land up making the biggest difference in their acquisitions and the safety of their current purchases. Anytime, if there's downward pressure, there's opportunity. So for those of you guys that are looking for opportunity, this will also bring additional opportunity to the current state of the market. Ladies and gentlemen, for more information just like this, click and subscribe to our YouTube channel, pound that thumbs up button, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side.